Hi, I'm Matt from edgecraft.org. I'm the Minecraft guy. So last time I showed you how to set up all the um, packages and classes that are, are recommended for if you're going to just try to mod in general, especially your, your proxies and your main class or really things that you need. And a reference class is pretty nice too. Um, and I showed you how to put those all together. Okay. Uh, if you don't care about how all that stuff works and you just want to move on to copying my code and writing your own stuff uh, over my code without really thinking about how it all works together, you can totally skip this video and you can go to the next one where you, you know, type what I type and insert your item names or whatever over mine. Um, but if you do kind of want to know how it works and want to know a little bit about how the Java programming language works, I recommend you continue watching this video. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over what we did last video and explain what it's about, why we do it. So in your main class, you have um, a bunch of things. You have this annotation. Annotations are things that begin with that at sign. And the annotation lets everything know that this is your main class. It tells the mod ID, the references, and the accepted versions of Minecraft that you store in your references class, and you keep those stored there. You also create what's called an instance of your main class. Your main class has to be created, and then you also store information. You tell it about your proxy settings, um, what is on the server side and what is on the client side. Then what you do is you run three steps that Forge tends to use to add things to your game. One is the pre-init, things that it creates before it runs Minecraft. The init, things that it creates at running Minecraft. And the post-init, things it makes when um, after it's already started running Minecraft. And you gotta list your things in the proper order. A note on Java, in Java, you have things called classes. Those are the files that you made, your mod main class, your client proxy class. Those are blueprints, OK? Those are informations on how to build something. And when you actually run a Java program, it actually builds instances of those things called objects. So think of a class like a blueprint for a building and an object as the actual creations of specific types of buildings. So what we can see right here is you have a class called mod main, which is this very class we're looking at. And what you do is you create an you create an instance of that mod main that we have conveniently called instance, and that is going to uh, actually create this in your mod when Minecraft starts running. Well, when your Minecraft mod starts running. In this section, we're going to look at this uh, interface. It's called I common proxy. Interfaces usually begin with an I. It's kind of like a class, but really what it does is it just stores methods. And those methods have no squiggly brackets, no curly brackets. So they are called unimplemented methods. They just kind of are there. And it's basically, a, it's sort of like a template for classes. So if I want to make my different proxy classes, I have a common proxy class that stores the template methods. Coming into my client proxy, I now have these methods implemented. You see, I even auto-implemented them. It gave me an error, and then it forced me to implement all these methods that the I common proxy interface says I have. And notice it says implements. So when you implement an interface, you type implement after the name of your class, and then you type the name of your interface, as you can see in the top. And yeah, I'm going to delete those little things that give away the fact that I have auto-generated this. In Minecraft, there's two sides, as it says, to uh, your code that you're running. There's the server side and the client side. The server side handles the logic. The client side handles how things look. Because you don't want textures and stuff like that having to get sent to you from a server. That would really slow the game down. But at the same time, you want the code to work out in single player and multiplayer. And so in the case where you're running a dedicated server, where you have a computer whose whole job is to run a server, um, then what you have is a dedicated server and each computer connected to that server is a client. When you are just running single player, you still have a server, but it simulates a server on your single player. So you run both a server and a client at the same time on your own game. 
So there's still that server client relationship because they still want the server to handle the logic and the client to handle the what it looks like, uh, your, inter your interface and all that stuff. And so um, they didn't want to have to write a different, completely different program for multiplayer Minecraft as they did for single player Minecraft. So they kept that server client dynamic, even if you're running it in single player, that way they don't have to change the code. It works whether it's multiplayer or single player. So that is what the uh, classes uh, mean, both for Minecraft and a class concept in Java. And if you take that with you forward in your mod development, then you might be able to sort of come up with your own ideas without me spelling things out for you. Now, if you don't care, I agree, it's fine, and I will spell things out for you, and that's, that's great. But it's very rewarding if you have the concept in your head and then can say, well, but, but what if I, and then figure it out for yourself based on your background knowledge. And I highly recommend looking through any Java tutorial you can find on the internet. Uh, the Oracle website has some. There's tons of YouTube videos that have Java tutorials if you want to expand your Java knowledge. But hopefully this video has done something to help you get Minecraft a little bit better and to get Java a little bit better too. So in the next video, yeah, we're going to resume typing in some code. And uh, yeah, if that's what you want to do, then yeah, we're going to keep doing more of that. So here, here.